This is the one written in all the books, the dream final in the netball for Delhi 2010 between the world champions, the Australian Diamonds and the defending Commonwealth Games champions, New Zealand Silver Ferns. It's the greatest rivalry in netball and in big finals like this one there's usually only a whisker in it. In their last confrontation, just last month, Australia beat New Zealand 46 to 40. But the time before that, it was the Ferns who prevailed by a massive 19-goal margin. In fact, when you crunch the numbers going into this one, over the last five tests, the spoils have alternated. Australia, New Zealand, Australia, New Zealand, Australia. Which former Silver Fern, Tanya Dalton, may well be a very good omen. Oh, wow, wouldn't that be nice? Look, this game is massive. An unbelievable amount of preparation has gone into it from, from both camps. I think the difference today, well, physically, the Silver Ferns are on a par with the Australian Diamonds. Mentally, I think the big question, who is going to absorb the pressure the best? This is a repeat of the Commonwealth Games final from four years ago in Melbourne. On that occasion, it was the Silver Ferns who won 60 to 55. One of the biggest margins in a big final was the five goals. And this match, four years later in Delhi, the 100th game between New Zealand and Australia. Earlier in the bronze medal match, England were categoric against the Sunshine Girls Jamaica. They won 70 to 47. It's pretty even in the first, but the English side just stretched out to win a bronze medal, which they richly deserve. This is the one we've been waiting for though, Tanya. We've caught up with the leadership group from the Silver Ferns and coach Ruth Aiken. And they're steely, they're determined, they're focused, they're ready. And they know they have to stay in the moment, I'm sure. They've gone through every backline throw and every centre pass, every defensive move. Everything has been ticked off. We heard it from Laura Langman a few days ago. The preparation right from, you know, how much water, how the hydration, the food, the mental preparation, the rest. This is it. Well, Australia have been ruthless and their results reflect that. Their tightest match was their semi-final against England, which they won by six. Probably because England took Jeeva Mentor off, though, to be fair. New Zealand the same. Their tightest match also against England, the margin the same by six. Their semi-final, an easier one, 59 to 43 over Jamaica. Plenty of Kiwi fans. And the golden girl, Valerie Adams. She's beside Monique Williams and Beatrice Balmawina, who you do have to say, Tanya, was a pretty handy netballer in her day. Oh, yep, I remember coming up against her. So quick on, on defence. Plenty of Aussie fans in as well. And we talk about the mental preparation of this New Zealand side. And the umpires for this one, Gary Burgess and Chris Campbell. Gary Burgess, this will be his first senior international final. So a big day for him. Chris Campbell, though, it's his second consecutive Commonwealth Games final. And he also controlled the 2007 World Championship final. So plenty of experience. We've also seen Gary Burgess do a great job throughout this tournament. Jolene Henry wearing the race face. And the key combination for Australia, without doubt, that mobile shooting circle of Sherelle McMahon and Nat Medhurst. We caught up with Sherelle McMahon in the lead into this final. You talk about steely determination in the Silver Fern side. No shortage of it in the green and gold corner either. Oh, McMahon has been a true leader, a massive week for her. Flag bearer for Australia. Um, just not at her leadership out on court, her combination with Natalie Midhurst, just outstanding. You know, the Aussies shooting in the 90s, they come into this match, this final, and they are looking slick. They're also wanting redemption, because four years ago at home in Melbourne, 
they lost, and they lost by five. And I've talked about it throughout the week, the vision of Irene Van Dyke hurling that ball into the air, just you little ripper, you know. And the Ferns will know, seven of these players out here are defending their title. They will know that feeling. They have worked so hard for this, like the Aussie Diamonds, so we are in for a cracker. This was the final that everyone picked. And boy, it's salivating. New Zealand, the defending champions. Australia, the world champions. There is never any love lost when these two meet. And their last five exchanges, the last one, 5th of September. Australia won by six. The time before that, New Zealand won by 19, and it's alternated in the three encounters prior to that. So it's almost impossible to call, to be fair. Well, I feel sick, so I hate to think how the players are <laughs> feeling. I guess in the back of their mind, it's all of Hearns that 19 goal win. It is the one that we've all been waiting for, no doubt about it. New Zealand and Australia playing for gold in the Delhi Commonwealth Games at Tiagaraj Stadium, this beautiful netball venue. Plenty of Kiwi fans in, but so too plenty of folk wearing the green and gold. It's the first time we've had anything that really resembles a full house here at Tiagaraj Stadium, and the atmosphere absolutely electrifying. former Silver Fern, Tanya Dalton. There's really only going to be a whisker in it either way. Well, for both sides, it's about playing every ball, every shot. You know, one turnover could be the difference in the end. So staying in the moment, staying in the present, and keeping your heads. Well, we'll all see you in Glasgow, <laughs> but not quite yet. Because this is the match that we as netball fans have been waiting this entire Commonwealth Games for. Starting seven for Australia, no surprises. McMahon and Medhurst combine in the shooting circle. Then Lauren Nurse, the start at wing attack ahead of Kim Green. Bomberto, Hallinan and Monia Gerard. And the Furminator, Susan Furman, will match up against Irene van Dyke. Plenty of firepower on the bench. Perhaps the injection of Laura Geitz and perhaps the injection of Catherine Cox, the veteran Australian shooter for New Zealand. Van Dijk and Tutair combine in the shooting circle. Then Temapara George gets the nod at wing attack. Langman and Henry complete the midcourt. And then Casey Williams gets the start at goal defence. And Katrina Grant preferred at goal key. She sat out the semi final mostly because Romelda Aiken is such tall timber for Jamaica. Uh, Katrina Grant will be well fired up. Lots of ammo on the bench for New Zealand as well. <laughs> Captain fantastic Casey Williams. She's just 25 years old. And this will be her 54th test cap. <laughs> Sherelle McMahon just so crucial for Australia. This is her 115th test cap, the 33-year-old. And she wants gold. Waiting for the delivery of the ball in the start of this crucial trans-Tasman encounter. It'll decide who goes home with the gold medal. First centre pass, Australia. This is it. The gold medal match, a hand to it already from the Silver Ferns defence. Australians swing it and use the top of the circle for Natalie Medhurst. Distance, Casey Williams. First blood to the Aussies, and Medhurst on fire all week. Let's see what New Zealand can do. And Tutaia there with her first touch. A lot of talk's been said 
A lot of pressure on her. She's got a front up today. She was outstanding in the semi-final a couple of days ago. Wrong angle over the long limbs of Susan Furman, and I think Timapara George will know it. Yeah, you can't afford to do those diagonals. Casey Williams lurches. Expect her to throw everything. She never leaves anything on court, does Casey Williams. Baseline pop, Sherelle McMahon. Yeah, and that split, we'll see it a lot. Norma Plummer. She'll be approving her team's effort so far. They've had a flyer, Australia. Two goal buffer. Burns pushing Australian attack wide. Nurse uses Helen in, and there's a scrap. Jolene Henry's onto it. And Van Dyke coming out top. Already mobility shown there in Silver Ferns circle. And a rare miss, Irene Van Dyke. But she was taking a lot of heat from Susan Furman. She's been so effective on the rebound, but up against the likes of Furman. She's met her match. And Furman stands at a metre 96, Van Dyke at a metre 90. Hands on pressure. Casey Williams, Katrina Grant should have it. The call goes against her. No, it doesn't. 1-0 to Katrina Grant. Yep. Well, I think she thought the call was going against her, and she wondered why. So did we all. However, George now. Good deep pass to Langman and a tidy angle to Tahir. That's the stuff. The crowd goes nuts, and her face says it all. She's got that first one through the hoop. And Van Dyke choosing to come out again. Not a bad ploy against Furman. Yeah. Big swing to Tahir, screening off Gerard. And what a racket. Two apiece. Midhurst, wing attack side. She squares to Von Berto. And the pressure coming from Tutair. George just hands over everything. Casey Williams loitering on the goal kick side, so they're going to promote the intercept. Good patient work, Australia. And Langman pushing Von Berto into the corner. Oh, good low work, Katrina Grant. Contact on the ball. She'll be penalised. And good offload, McMahon. That is a lean. Doesn't worry Nat Medhurst, though. Good drive, Langman, and good straight lines. There it is, Van Dyke. Just so effective, straight up. And sure and steady. We talked about Sherelle McMahon and how proud she was as the flag bearer for Australia. Well, so too Irene Van Dyke. And she also is playing her 115th test in this one. Magical touches from the Aussies. Yeah, slick footwork there from Midhurst. But the call has been made on McMahon. A chance now, Silver Ferns. Can they convert? Tyre, a long range shot. She's on song. Swish. So New Zealand edge in front. And Burns happy to play it around. Big diagonal. She just about owns that corner of the court, does Himapara George. She feeds so beautifully from the wing attack side pocket. And it's fine if it goes over there, so long as the shooters are, are screening out the defenders, not giving them the opportunity to go for those big diagonals. And out of court. So Irene Van Dijk in a great position for the rebound, but just ran out of court space. Furman now squares to Gerard. And there's the Aussie ball speed. They keep it low. So a cunning ploy against the tall timber of Williams and Grant. Four apiece, nine and a half minutes until quarter time. 
And Nurse doing a good job. She's got to start at wing attack for Australia ahead of Kim Green. Perhaps the only bolter. She came on in the semi-final, and made an impact. That's one heck of a rebound. She's a legend, Sherelle McMahon. Rebounds don't come often, so Williams and Grant will be rowing it. Check it out. How did she do that? She... George drives to the hot spot. And Furman again penalised, so she'll need to hang off if she's not to get pinged out of the game. And just an easy little pop pass here from Titaia. Nice smile on the face of Irene Van Dyke, such a cool yeah. customer. Doesn't matter what sort of match it is, always smiling. Oh, McMahon and Medhurst. We've seen it all tournament. Sublime bit ball speed. It's just awesome to watch. She steps around, does Matt Medhurst. <laughs> Williams just about all the way back to their own goal third, New Zealand. And Tutaia now on the wing attack side. Great defence, Australia. And a big swing to George. Nice work, Tutaia. Rolling the front of the circle. And Ruth Aiken taking notes tense times. This is her 99th test match as coach of the Silver Fern. So a pretty special day. Beautiful loop pass to Medhurst and Grant, not three feet. There's one for New Zealand. Last time McMahon snuck the rebound. They won't let her do it on two occasions. Now New Zealand. Van Dyke out of the circle, goal attack side. They'll need to swing it. And the call is offside. Mangman a bit enthusiastic in her chase for the ball. So a bit of an opportunity squandered, and now Australia charge through court. McMahon and Medhurst right out of the circle, but we've seen it. Oh, great screen, McMahon. Takes times, not just for Norma Plummer. Just over six minutes to run until quarter time. Seven to six. Australia just in front of the Silver Ferns. Gerard just so quick on those little balls. So important to take your feet. Expect the offload. No, there's not enough on it. And with Maria Tutair in, in such good touch, I wonder whether she should have had a crack. Callanan. Now Medhurst, and that goes to no one. And that's uncharacteristic from Australia. Grant will take the throw in. Under all sorts of pressure from Nat Medhurst, as Casey Williams. Tight one-on-one -on -one marking from the Aussies. Just a few stray balls. First quarter nerves from both sides, to be fair. Throw in Australia. It's a close tangle in the circle. And the screen put on by Medhurst, then the turn away. And stepping. So a couple of random calls coming down that end of the court from Chris Campbell. They're helping keep New Zealand in touch, though. And Henry and Williams doing a truckload of work on the transverse. <laughs> Monica Gerard has another stab. We'll watch for Van Dyke to set the screen. And she does. She'll do everything she can to make sure Susan Furman gets nowhere near it. It's 
just under four and a half minutes left of this first spell. Seven each, nothing in it. There's, again, that amazingly proficient use of space. But Medhurst couldn't finish. Oh, too much on it. Second stray pass from captain Casey Williams. I want it back for Silver Ferns. Just the placement, just missing. A little bit over enthusiastic. So now another chance for Medhurst under so much pressure from Williams. Brilliant. And Medhurst has been going at 97% throughout this Commonwealth Games. Two misses. But it's these misses the Silver Ferns need to convert. Pretty low numbers from both teams so far in this match. Australia shooting wise running at 64%, New Zealand at, at just 70. Just so shows the pressure being put on, applied by both sides. Well, I almost <laughs> found myself applauding. And great timing, Casey Williams. So that he just New Zealand in front, Furman out hunting. Again, another stray pass from the Ferns. But Casey Williams on the rampage. It's all on. <laughs> and we didn't expect anything less. Gerard now. Finds Nurse. They try to work it around. Too close the call. And Casey Williams acknowledges it. So there's another for Australia. Eight apiece. The screen put up by Medhurst. Williams just getting caught, trying to hang on to Medhurst. It's pretty difficult when a screen set against you, though. The temptation is to do exactly that. Just to just want to hang on to your player, hang on to your man. And the preparation going on by George on that centre pass before the whistle goes. And Sundike called. We're coming in from out of court, so what has to happen? In fact, even Susan Furman can't believe it. She thought she'd been penalised. You've got to get a foot in there. Foot on court. So the Aussies will be relishing this. As that takes them two ahead. With under a minute and a half left until quarter time. And the pass. New Zealand will want it. Call against Grant. Just so quick to that low ball. Well, she's making it a signature of her game as Katrina Grant. Not sure what the call is though, because she doesn't have to stand down. Puzzling. Oh, oh man, was yeah. there. Instead, it's a throw into New Zealand. Norma Plummer can't believe it. And I guess with McMahon, it's that confidence to wait till the third second. Always pops free. Pretty vigorous on defence too, Sherelle McMahon. <laughs> Langman turned herself inside oh. out and then delivered a feed like that. Sensational. Over the head of Furman. And New Zealand back to within one with the pass. How's that? Precision. And they go again. Two defenders. Risky stuff from Tutaia. And they know that the clock is ticking down. They might just have time. They will because Furman's penalised. That's the end of the first quarter, but the shot will be taken. Yeah. Utterly outstanding defence from Monia Gerard means that the Australian Diamonds go to the break with their noses in front. It's quarter time at Tiaga Raj Stadium and it's the Australian Diamonds, the world champions, who lead the Silver Ferns, the defending Commonwealth Games champions, by just one, 10 to 9. The 
arm wrestle for gold at Tiagaraj Stadium in New Delhi. The world champions Australia are up against the defending Commonwealth Games champions, New Zealand's Silver Ferns and the Aussies just in front. 10 to 9, the score going into the second 15 minutes of play. The former Fern Tanya Dalton. Boy, it's exactly what we expected. There's the defensive pressure from both sides all the way through the court. You know, that they're forcing turnovers, but again, the other side's just turning it back, so. Oh, First yeah, centre yeah. pass. Second quarter. Australia 10, New Zealand 9, the Aussies. They look to make the buffer too, and Sherelle McMahon does. Condite out of the circle. It's the way they've obviously decided to play it today, Tanya. Get a bit of mobility going against the tall timber of Susan Furman. Lovely pass. Delicate touches from Irene van Dijk. Again, the Ferns putting on that wall defence from the centre pass. Grant out hunting the switch, but a good safe switch because Williams retrieves. And the call goes against the New Zealand defence. Gary Burgess uh, umpired the New Zealand semi-final against Jamaica. And there it is, McMahon, just that slick footwork. George Circlehead just about loses it, but Bonberto's penalised. And this time it's Susan Furman stood down to Tutaia the penalty shot which is good for having a mighty game so far is the 23 year old Aucklander and her 52nd test cap today Maria Tutaia and Langwin working hard on Vambuto keeping her off that circle edge well, I'm talking to Temapara George Tanya she said that Waimanama Tau Manu had just been onto them, stressing the importance of their mid-court defence. It just makes such a difference, and I think that's been a real strength of the Silver Fern side. And their repertoire of de defensive strategies. A oh, nice footwork from Van Dyke, but oh, George missed it completely. It's, in games like this, so easy to get tunnel vision when things are tight. So a bit of a blow for the Silver Ferns. This gives Australia the chance to stretch it out to three. The chant we all hate to hear, the Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. In full voice, and Williams out for, uh, up high. And they'll have the centre pass, Australia. So New Zealand need one. Nurse, easy one to McMahon, and a glorious baseline drive from Matt Medhurst. And just the confidence from McMahon to wait for Medhurst to come in. Never doubted it, never doubted that the pass could go along that baseline. And the Diamonds stretch the lead to four. Leanna Barrett Chase looks on. Will we see her injected into the game? It's in all sorts of combinations. Stunning. That's more like it from New Zealand. And Van Dyke giving herself room on that baseline. Wide on the goal attack side, Lauren Nurse. They square it. And now into the pocket. Expect the screen. Oh. There it is. But Katrina Grant read it like a book. And that's a team lifter, an intercept like that. Can the Silver Ferns convert? Offside. Offside. Yep. Yep. Offside the call on it. 
delicate offload. Oh, beautiful, unbelievable grant. And they're the setups they've been. They would have been watching the DVDs of Australia, what they do, all the moves. And Gerard sitting on Tutaia. Patient in the goal third from New Zealand. They're maintaining their composure against intense scrutiny from Australian defence. Wow. Back oh. to one. Kiwis will want the break, but Sherelle McMahon and ball speed, just inspiring, amazing. She's such a champion, McMahon. Again, Tutaia having to work off the line. And another miscommunication between George and Langman. Tumapara George missed the first two games of pool play here at this tournament with an inner ear problem, which really affected her, her balance. She was woozy for the first few days of this tournament. And out of that, I guess, came the opportunity for Liana Barrett-Chase to prove to her coach, Ruth Aitken, she's capable of a start. And good evasive play from Matt Medhurst, but too close is the call. And I guess it's about adjusting to these umpires. So we're back out to three, Australia. In the center. It's a nail biter all right. Leona Debrain looks on. Nurse in the hot spot. And a body roll from McMahon. Easy stuff. Dangerous times for New Zealand. Australia just so effective on that second phase from the centre pass, just putting the pressure on. George. The tall though against Juan Berto. So a lovely feeding position, but nothing on. Another chance for Australia. The Ferns will need it back. Time called. Australia four ahead. So no surprise that a tactical timeout really has been called by New Zealand. And Timapara George is the player who's called time. You can see Liana Barrett Chase warming up on the sideline and a few bibs being juggled around you can see anna scarlett you can see from our commentary yeah. position handing being handed the wing defense bib so it'll be interesting to see what plays out here the importance of making sure that australia don't get too far ahead tanya at this stage of the game how crucial Oh, unbelievable. Every ball, every centre pass counts. For the Silver Ferns, they've made seven turnovers too high. But that just shows that tight man-on-man -man pressure. They need to do more preparation prior to the ball coming through, get the defender off them, do the work, do the hard yards. Now, if you haven't watched much pool play at these Commonwealth Games, you might be wondering why Anna Scarlett's wearing the wing defence bib. Well, she's been outstanding there. She's not injected into the game yet, but she's wearing that wing bib on the bench, so no doubt she'll be like a coiled spring, waiting for her opportunity. And Waimata Matamanu there, you heard her with a lot to say. Yeah, well, it's now or never, isn't it? They don't get to come back next week. There's one. Oh, and lovely that... little George from Van Dyke. Tutaia had the confidence to keep that vision open. And it was Irene van Dijk who forced the turnover. So three in it. Halfway through the second quarter. Australia leading 18 to 15. Casey oh. Williams, absolutely spectacular.
And now we hear the Kiwi chants go up. Plenty of New Zealanders in this crowd. A bit of timing from the Ferns on attack there. And Titaia, yeah, long range. How's that? Back to two. And New Zealand narrow it to one. They're nice and patient, straight line wing attack side. They square it. We've seen some random calls down this end of the court. Here's another one. Yeah. And I guess that's part of the what if scenarios, the random calls you get. Henry thought she was clean, but she's called. So nurse, circle edge. And Katrina Grantfield for Lehman coming around Sherelle McMahon. And she'll go to the post. And the Aussies breathe a sigh of relief because it looked like New Zealand were on the charge. Now they're back to three with the pass. And McMahon, she's owning the baseline. Oh, there's always going to be marginal from this. <laughs> well, it's pretty uncharacteristic. Trying to fire, find a pocket. And Grant and Williams in there. I haven't seen many go astray, though, that's for sure. Ferns just needing to ease their way through court. There's a long range one, but Gerard will be called for distance. She doesn't hold it. Three. And Van Dijk in prime position, position to snaffle the rebound. And that goal, the result of that turnover. Free gift, really, for Casey Williams. They reset, and they'll try to keep it straight. No high-risk stuff against this Aussie defensive combination. Gerard called for leaning back on her player. And a rare miss, Maria Tutaia. Ferns needed it, would have brought them back to within one. Instead, the Aussies rampage through court. Silver Ferns going at 74%. Oh, and I think the, the arm was going one way, then it was swung to the other way. Oh, a bit of bad luck for Timapara George because she danced her way out of court. Never mind, Lauren Nurse now, they swing it through the Aussies. And this is what, what will be what the Silver Ferns set up for, those big swings. So Williams, Grant can have a go. Oh, Medhurst on song. Just over three and a half minutes left now on the clock until half time. 20 to 17. Australian Diamonds leading the Silver Ferns. This is the gold medal match, so much at stake. Medhurst uses Helen, and Helen has been oh, one of the stars. And that's perplexing. Jolly Henry, boy, she's really soldiered through so far. And another call goes against the New Zealand defenders. McMahon stepped in there, tried to go under Williams. Can't go over. Go under. Out to four now, Australia. New Zealand sent a pass, though. And Casey Williams used. Nothing on, so they reset. A nice little roll there from Titaia. Under all sorts of pressure from Moni Gerard. What a toiler. And Van Dyke trying just to post up. And now hell ball. Yeah. Gerard and Medhurst exchange. And this is a huge opportunity for Australia. 
will take them out to five with the centre pass, and it does. So New Zealand need a turnover, and they need it pretty much now. And that's one to Jolene Henry. Nurse pull there, pushing. And that's what the Ferns need to do. Open up their, their vision into the circle. Have the confidence. To Taier, as George drives into her favourite pocket. She loves to feed from the corners. It's Timapara George, she's pretty good at it. To Taier now, should be nice and simple, and it is. What a wrestle. Yes, oh. man, stupendous. What a class oh. act. But change of change of pace. Bonus contact. Positive contact in the face. Shot of contact. Gerard called for contact, so to Tayer, the penalty shot. She's good for it. Aussies will try to get another one on the board before half time into the dying stages of this second spell. Instead, it's New Zealand who might just have time to get another. And they squander it. Trina Grant going, come on, girls. Yeah, so hard for a defence when they come up with the ball. Squandered away. for the bomb to go in. Team of Para George regathers, but Van Dijk's got her back to the ball. And that'll bring to a close the first half here at Tiagaraj Stadium. It's the gold medal match between New Zealand and Australia, and at the moment, it's the Diamonds who are sparkling. They lead by three going to the break, 23 to 20. Tanya Dalton, your assessment of this first 30. Ooh. Pretty massive. When you look at it, the, the Aussies, the way they're playing it around, the, the pressure they're applying, they've forced New Zealand into a number of uncharacteristic turnovers um, down the attacking end. I, I wonder whether our vision into the circle is getting quite tunnel vision. They need to open it up. They need to get it to Van Dyke under that hoop. 23 to 20 is the score. Australia leading New Zealand in this gold medal match. Tiagaraj Stadium here in New Delhi. The Silver Ferns have half an hour left. They're defending their title. And look at the stats there. Unusual. 77% shooting for New Zealand, 85 for Australia. When you look at the turnovers, 10 for New Zealand. So, yeah, very, very high. Intercepts, it's amazing. We're coming up with more intercepts, more deflections, but we're not getting it down and we're not converting it. And we have talked about some of the random calls, particularly down Chris Campbell's end of the court, but to be honest, all you ask for is consistency. Yeah, and I guess that's all part of international netball. You know, neutral umpires. These umpires probably aren't used to umpiring the game at this, this level. The, both sides would have known that. And they've just got to, you know, raise a, rise above it. Yeah, having said that, though, Chris Campbell, the Jamaican umpire, down that end of the court. This is his second consecutive Commonwealth Games final. And he did umpire the 2007 World Championship final as well. So he does have plenty of experience. Well, the Aussie fans have plenty to cheer about here at Tiagaraj Stadium. Their team stated it wants gold. It's still hurting after being beaten by five in the last Commonwealth Games <laughs> final in <laughs> Melbourne. Pretty random spectators in the house today at Tiagaraj Stadium, and they're partying it up at half time, where it's the Australian Diamonds leading just by three though, 23 to 20. They lead New Zealand as we head to the break.
waiting for the start of the third quarter in the gold medal match at the Nick Walter Garage Stadium where the world champions, the Australian Diamonds, lead the Silver Ferns. But it's just by three, 23 to 20. And Tanya Dalton it begs the question, will there be changes? Well, for Ruth Aitken, I guess it's assessing it. She's got options on the bench. That is the strength of the Silver Ferns. She can make changes. I wonder, you know, Scarlett, we've seen her at wing defence, she can be destructive, the, you know, that fast twitch, the way she is, will she be thrown on? Well, she's wearing the wing defence bib as we peer across the court, the Silver Ferns back and ready to go for this third spell, and the changes that we can see, as I say, Anna Scarlett's wearing the wing defence bib, and Liana Barrett Chase has got Chase. But they do have two sets of bibs, they so do. I think they're messing with our heads right now. And Temapara George is still wearing the wing attack bib as well, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. What will Coach Ruth Aiken have said to her team? They have half an hour now, they're defending their crown, it's do or die. Well, I just think on attack, with the Silver Ferns, they've got to do the preparation early. They've got to get, you know, the Aussies, they're renowned for that tight one-on-one -on -one defence, and they're doing it effectively. So they've got to get off them and then do and then do their moves, sort of thing, and, which is taxing, but this is what they've worked for. Well, the world champions, the Australian Diamonds, back onto centre court now as we wait for the resumption of play. It's half-time, so we're getting set for the start of the third quarter. This is what basically 18 months for these teams has come down to. Been long campaigns for both New Zealand and Australia, and now there's half an hour left. time at Tiagaraj Stadium. New Zealand and Australia playing for gold. There's half an hour left. New Zealand in arrears by three. The Australian Diamonds leading 23 to 20. Much on the shoulders of the veteran Irene van Dijk. Australia sensing that they have a chance for redemption. They lost by five in the last Commonwealth Games final. They don't want deja vu. She's been called under pressure so far has Maria Tutaia. And the injection into the game of Liana Barrett Chase at wing attack for New Zealand. And the long limbs of Anna Scarlett who's wearing the wing defence bib. So good to see the Silver Ferns coach brave enough to make the changes. Here we go, the third spell, the one the Australians called the championship quarter. The former Fern, Tanya Dalton. This is it. This is the moment. And for Ruth Aitken, I think, wise move, bringing on Barrett Chase. Her vision, I think we could look into Van Dyke more. Uh, putting that ball over, that's what we were renowned for, the feeding into Van Dyke and... Uh, and the first call from the Great Britain umpire, Gary Bird, just goes against New Zealand. So not the start the Ferns wanted. Nurse now. McMahon out of the circle. She's quite high in the goal third. And they go to the pocket. Great work on the baseline from Nat Medhurst. Oh. Beautiful rebound. Norma Plummer goes. That could have been a dream start. Anna Scarlett, a great target through court at wing defence. We've loved watching her play there during this tournament. Distance court. Gerard hounding to Tyre, who's up short. And the call goes against Furman. So, gee, we're lucky. A bit of a lottery. One back 
for New Zealand. They won't be two phased, they're two down. Still very much in this game. Von Berto uses Gerard on the transverse line to reset. This time it's Laura Langman penalised. And McMahon like a pocket rocket. Grant and Williams just have to be so efficient on those switches. And they're trying to keep up with Midhurst and McMahon. Like trying to keep up with a couple of fireflies. <laughs> <laughs> Williams under all sorts of pressure from Medhurst. And Tutai here moving the circle, but good scrap from Liana Barrett Chase. Twenty-four to twenty-two. Twelve and a half minutes left to run in this third spell. Bonberto, so patient. They swing it. That's the one the Kiwi defenders could be looking for. And McMahon, elusive, evasive, brilliant. Barrett Chase working hard and replay ball. Irene van Dyke knew it. She dropped the ball. She might as well have regathered it though, because Susan Furman would have just come and grabbed it. But those small mistakes it can just be so costly oh, at the stage of the game. Gets a hand to it. And you'd have to say a pretty important turnover on the overall scheme of things. And for the Silver Ferns, it's about converting these turnovers. Beautiful vision from Williams. And sometimes in a game's tight like this year, your vision gets tunnel. Opening it up, looking over the mess. Renee Hallinan, she's been a star for Australia, and you've got to wonder. Wonder Gerard just dropped the ball yeah. and regathered it. It was pretty Not much seen, a... though, by the umpire. Yeah, a replay of, of what Van Dyke just did. Pressure galore from Williams, but she's called for distance. <laughs> and McMahon. Both players out now. So there's not much <laughs> leeway, that's for sure. Tidy defence required in this Commonwealth Games final. Matt Von Berto set a nice little trap which Barrett Chase ran into. <laughs> As did Gerard. And Furman will be called for distance. So you'd expect both players to be beside and away, but no, Gerard's allowed to defend. <laughs> under 10 minutes left until three-quarter time. Still two in it, 26 to 24. The Aussies oh. ahead. Take a bow, Sherelle McMahon. Simply sensational. <laughs> Casey Williams wonders <laughs> where the heck did you yeah. come from? What was that? Barrett, Chase, so athletic, and what a pass. Anything you can do, Diamonds, we can do too. They're trying everything, Furman, Gerard. Gary Burgess, though, he's pretty tough on the defenders. A nice movement there from Van Dyke. Williams has a stab, throw in Australia. Very high net, Medhurst and oh. there's Scarlett. And Grant. Getting the tip, Scarlett picking up the pieces. It's taken a few minutes for her to settle into her work and a Scarlett, but that's the kind of impact she can have. She's a pretty handy player. And better stuff again from Van Dyke. 
And that was a sublime pass. Yeah, how's the reach and the coordination? This is the chance for the Silver Ferns to draw even the offload to Van Dyke, and there it is. 27 each, the crowd go bananas. Hallerman finds Gerard. Oh, Barrett Chase trying to spoil. Oh. And the mobility of the Australian circle. Just extraordinary. Too much on it and a hand to it, Von Berto. So the Aussies get one back. And the speed at which they execute those turnovers. The way they bring it through the court. Yeah. From Budo pushing Barrett Chase. Terrific defensive pressure. Terrific. Nurse now almost rolls the ball to McMahon. And distance called. The Aussies back to three. Such a fast scoring team, this Australian unit. Wow. Lovely little dodge. Head down, Furman. Australia again now. They spend a lot of time at the head of the circle. That's how they get that rapid oh. movement going. And, yeah. and a big ups there for Anna Scarlett. Drew the contact. Van Dyke out of the circle. So lots of variety on attack from New Zealand. Barrett Chase will look beside her. Doesn't need to. Again, beautiful waiting on that pass. Wait, waited till Van Dyke was clear. Back to one. Langman and to Tyre. Easy progress into the circle for New Zealand. Van Dyke won't shoot. Happy to play it around. And the Ferns happy to play it around until things open up. Lauren Nurse tries to wrestle the ball off Casey Williams. Instead, Matt Methurst is penalised. So we stutter our way through court. And both players will be beside. Distance. <laughs> I'm not sure what Monia Gerard's doing there on Van Dyke, but being a nuisance. And you've got to congratulate Van Dyke in her, the way she's positioning for that rebound, giving herself room. Against a much taller player and Susan Furman as well. Van Dyke. A metre 90 and Susan Furman a metre 96. Meantime, the Aussies swing it into the pocket. And this will be an easy one for Nat Murthurst. She's under pressure from Williams. Great lean. But she's good for it. Aussie fans love it. Van Dyke. She knows Barrett oh. Chase is going to be there. Oh! Just oh. too much on it. Yeah, that sensational change of pace, that stop. Crucial chapter of the game. The Ferns will want it back. Medhurst resets through Helen and now Nurse. And good patience. The whistle again, and it's Scarlett who will be penalised. Great discipline from Anna Scarlett. 
And Casey Williams forces the turnover. It'll be a throw in to the Silver Ferns. Big number that one. Turnovers New Zealand twice as many as Australia, running at 12 to 6. So some tidying up to do for the Ferns. Well seen, Langman, and well worked to Taia. Nice piece of footwork. She had plenty of jumping practice against Jamaica in the semi-final. Well, that's drawn New Zealand level 31 each. Nat Medhurst will want the Diamonds to go one up. They do. As we edge our way towards three-quarter time. Goal attack side, Barrett Chase. Van Dijk out of the circle. And distance called. No, in fact, it's Furman. He's penalised. Didn't even realise she was out of the circle. Easy option for Langman over the top. Even again, 32 apiece. A little over two minutes left until three-quarter time. Hands-on pressure from Scarlett. She oh. Gets her fingertips, fingernails to it. And Silver it's finished. finished off. They hit the front. Take a bow, Anna Scarlett. And they hit the front for the first time in this match. Now another one of those peculiar calls goes against Maria Tutayer. So just when the ferns look oh. as though they were getting oh, a pass. Anna Scarlet, so divine justice, really. And Langman puts it over. Oh, there it is. Sensational take. I was just about to say sensational finish as well, but... Susan Furman, the spoiler. And you can just feel the ante. Rising. And the crowd, the chant goes up. Both Williams and Grant over the ball. Grant's penalised for distance. And Williams is over the shooting arm. So clever defence of the shot. Back to one. The seesaw continues. We expected nothing less. Well, it's exhilarating to watch, isn't it? Suddenly, next level, the Silver Ferns attacking combination. You can just feel the tension, not only in the, around the stadium, just everybody working so hard. Impressive defence of the shot from Susan Furman. And they won't want Australia to score 15 seconds on the clock. McMahon, though, she'll make no mistake. Oh! oh she does! It. And look for the bomb to go in. No time. What a third quarter it has been here at Tiagaraj Stadium. It's tense, it's tight, it's terrific. And New Zealand has turned it around because going to the last break of this match, they lead the Australian Diamonds. It's 35 to 33. Get set, we are in for a thriller of a final 15, and it'll d decide who'll stand atop the podium here at the Delhi Commonwealth Games. New Zealand defending its Commonwealth Games title at Tiagaraj Stadium in Delhi. They're doing so against the world champions Australia. And we're getting set for the last 15 minutes. And what's been an intriguing match. New Zealand leading by two. 35 to 33. 15 minutes left. And in that third spell, former Fern Tanya Dalton 
New Zealand turned it around. They did, and you have to say the changes Coach Ruth Aitken made, the injection of Anna Scarlett, just mouth-watering some of the stuff she did. Barrett Chase, I think it's opened up the vision into the circle. Here we go, 15 minutes left. New Zealand leading Australia by two, 35 to 33, the Commonwealth Games final. They're playing for gold. Barrett Chase finds Langman, circle edge. Oh. Breathtaking. And the shot falls in for two, Taia. Takes the ferns out to three. What have Australia got? I know they'll have plenty left in the tank. They're one of the fittest teams you'll see on a sports field or court, as the case may be. Nurse. That man right in front of her. Massive lean from Williams. And she forces the turnover. Not. Again, throwing. another baseline call. Massive pressure from the New Zealanders on defence, though. But we know Sherelle McMahon, she's such a veteran. 33 years old, her 115th test cap today. She does not oh. want to go home. Williams pouncing with a silver medal. I'm sure Casey Williams probably dreamt about that one. Well, you don't often force the held ball against Sherelle McMahon. That's four. And the centre pass for New Zealand. 13 and a half minutes left. Renee Helen in a hand to yeah, it. Yeah, but Van Dyke quick to the crumbs. And Barrett Chase resets on the transverse. It's time to calm things down. The lollipop pass, <laughs> and that was simply unbelievable from Van Dyke. And crucial shot for Tutaia. How's that? She's unbelievable, Van Dyke. There's another oh. one for New Zealand. They're rampaging. And what a start for the, from the Silver Ferns. The New Zealand bench players on their feet, as they should be. That takes it out to six, Norma Plummer. I'm sure she'll have plenty to say to her Australian Diamonds. It's a long time left, and we know how quickly this Australian team can score goals. To tie in now. Furman will get called. She does. There's another. Well, we talk about the Australians being able to score rapidly. An interesting so do the New here. Zealanders. Sharam McMahon. High fives from the women wearing the black dress. They have surged at the start of this fourth quarter. It really has been unbelievable. And in this injury break, they lead 40 to 33. A seven goal buffer with 12 minutes to play. Tanya Dalton? Oh, <laughs> I can hardly speak. You can just feel it. You can feel those invisible threads amongst the side, the sideline, everybody. They're on a mission. This is what they work for. This campaign, they've trained their butts off. They've got 12 minutes to go. And you could say exactly the same thing when you look across at those women. And with 12 minutes left to play, seven goals ain't much no. against such a classy side. Yeah, so it's about keeping calm, keeping not, cool. Keep, not that I'm complaining <laughs> as a New Zealand netball fan, to be fair. Keeping your heads one at a time. One of your Gerard boys, she'll throw everything at this. And Kim Green brought on at wing attack, so the Aussies trying to change it up. She's spent the most time during this Com Games campaign wearing the wing attack bib, has Kim Green. So let's see what she can do, hand to it, Grant. They're at everything, the Kiwi defenders. One back for Australia, the margin six. Barrett Chase charging. 
And that's a free gift. They won't want to squander it. And you'll notice another change in the Aussie colours. Catherine Cox, the veteran on at Golshit. She combines with Sherelle McMahon. It's a combination we're so used to seeing. Scarlett swats at it, but she gets called for distance. So big call here from coach Norman Plummer. And the screen really well executed. And Catherine Cox take a bow. There's one back for Australia, just five in it now. And McMahon taking charge on the line. Oscar ends up in the circle though. You're allowed there when you've got a goalkeeper and goal defence. Bib on Scarlett. Oh, nice little pocket there from Cox. And well read from Bombudo. And calm under pressure, Catherine Cox. This is her 82nd test cap today. Williams, oh, the way she snatches that ball. Settle things. You need to be careful, you're not held cool for hell ball. Oh, beautiful. Almost a dance yeah. move. She's yeah. been watching the Bollywood moves in the crowd as Irene van Dyke. The old half roll. Australia now. And the tangle of limbs, the upshot is that Katrina Grant will be penalised. Catherine Cox has to go long range. And she's got her eye in. Oh, the athleticism of Liana oh. Barrett Chase. There's another one back for Australia. A brilliant lean from Williams and Cox. Not afraid to put it from out wide. No surprise now, New Zealand call time. So they were rampant at the beginning of this fourth quarter. They took a seven goal lead. And now the Aussies clawing their way back in. You wouldn't expect anything else. 41 plays 38. Plenty to say, Coach Ruth Aiken and her assistant Wai Tomanu. And the woman injected into the game at goal shoot for Australia, Kath Cox, she's come on really well. She has, and she's been shooting at 86% throughout this Commonwealth game. She's an experienced campaigner. And she's got a, a good combination with McMahon. And I think McMahon probably can take charge a bit more out at goal attack. So Jolene Henry back on at wing defence. So a good move. She faces off well against Kim Green. A bit of a bane to her, actually. Von Berto now. Green and Henry tussle off the ball. Oh. <laughs> hard to know what you call yeah. that and hard to know... She wasn't sure whether to pick it up or leave it or... Less than nine minutes now to run. 41 to 39, it's New Zealand ahead. The bullet pass, Barrett Chase. And distance will be called, but Tutaye doesn't need a second shot. Good sliding defense of the center pass. New Zealand and Cox at the circle head. They oh. spill it. Oh, and Cox comes up with it. Right, Lean Williams. But Cox is used to being under all sorts of pressure when she shoots the ball. This time, it's Irene van Dijk out of the circle. And Barrett Chase doing all she can. Brilliant in the air is Liana Barrett Chase. She sort of needs to be though. She's just a metre 68 tall. Well, stand up and be counted, Maria Tutayer. Brilliant shooting. Cox, 
this time. Wing attack side quite high in the goal third. They work it to Australia. Ferns throwing everything at it. Yes. And that's off the fingertips of Catherine Cox. Mm -hmm. New Zealand get the throw in. Halfway through the final quarter. And Grant tight, one on one. McMahon swats at it. And through the fingertips of Liana Barrett-Chase, Casey Williams just didn't have control or composure when she delivered it. Here come Australia. Oh, nice swing of the ball from Cox. Beautiful angles. They're at their best when they use ball speed, Australia, and that was close to their best. Back to two. If you've got any fingernails left, you're doing better than me. Gerard called again. Look for the offload. Instead, the rebound. Van Dijk positioned beautifully under the post. Yeah. Tutai will be saying thanks very much, buddy. The call against Henry. And the Aussies careful to set the penalty in the right place. Cox a little awkward, but she'll turn and shoot. And Nothing but net. And a switch on the centre pass. Tutaia used. Oh, Van Dyke. A nice little up to go back, but just not seen. The really dynamic thing about the play of Liana Barrett-Chase is that she waits for three seconds. So if there's a late dodge or a late up to go back, she almost always sees it. Patient stuff, New Zealand. Someone needs to hit the hot spot. Laura Langman does. Oh, and such a great ball carrier. Hand to it. Susan Furman. Hard to know what the call was for. However, Renee Helen and the player who stood down. Rihanna Barrett Chase just takes a second to gain some composure and sees the pass on to Van Dyke. Big lean Furman. McMahon back out at goal attack. Swings it. Henry, though, penalised. <laughs> Katrina Grant. Scuttlebutt ends up on the pine. And Cox. Hasn't she come on well, Catherine Cox? So cool, under pressure. New Zealand born, of course, Catherine Cox. Born in the Tron, Hamilton. Fundyke. She'll use her captain, Captain Fantastic, Casey Williams. And the pocket, Laura Langman. They'll look for a baseline drive. It's not on. Long range again, Maria Tutaia. left now in this Commonwealth Games final. It's New Zealand ahead. 46 to 43. Oh. Can they hold on? Oh, that tight one-on-one -on -one pressure. Langman, Henry. And a bonus for New Zealand. Barrett Chase charges. <laughs> crucial. Crucial time to score for the Ferns. This is massive. And she's up for it. The New Zealand fans go ballistic, so do the local ones. What a match. Fun Dyke. They just need to be careful with it, the Silver Ferns, and they'll know that. Yep, so important to stay in the moment. Out the back door. What can Australia do with it? Three minutes is a long time in netball. McMahon. No one home, but Von Berto's in the pocket. Oh. <laughs> Williams <laughs> hurls herself at Catherine Cox. And the Aussies get one back and the pass. So we're back to where we were a couple of moments ago. Australia very much in this match.
And they know they haven't got time on their side. Kim Green wants to quickly get this back underway. An easy one to McMahon, who will sink it. Less than two and a half minutes left, 47 to 45 in the New Zealand centre pass. And they've got a score from this. And you can hear them all calm. Keep your heads. And Renee Helen and what a fine Commonwealth Games campaign. The wing defence has had. Hold on to your seats, folks. This is not over. Two minutes left, two in it. New Zealand need it back. In Australia, they need to do it efficiently. Call against Langman. Williams hunting up high. And distance called. Gary Burgess has been tough on the defenders oh. all day, but Catherine Cox gets her own rebound. Outstanding. And Australia centre pass. A minute and a half left. Just one in it. What a finish. Green and McMahon. The pocket. And Katrina Grant, Grant. scaffling, going for it all. Kath Cox comes up good. We're even. New Zealand pass. A minute to run. New Zealand must score. That's the understatement of the century. This is the biggest moment in all these players' lives. Baseline. Irene van Dijk she goes, goes to long the range and she misses. I'm not sure why she shot. 40 seconds to go. A chance for Australia because they'll have the centre pass after this. Will the green and golds? Oh, Langman. And Catherine Cox, who's been injected in this last quarter. The rebound, there's time left for New Zealand. It's 47 all. They must score. 20 seconds, we've just seen the card held up. 10 seconds. The bench. There's the bomb. Oh, and it's out the back door. The whole stadium's on its feet. And that's the end of 60 minutes of play. New Zealand, Australia, it's 47 apiece. This Commonwealth Games final will go into extra time. New Zealand had their chances, so too did Australia. It's been even all the way through, Tanya Dalton. I just, Van Dyke there, you know, shooting the long shot under pressure. They had the time. It's time to regroup and start again. Wow. Calm down, I guess they are going to make it. Well, the intensity on the expressions worn by both camps. We're about to head into extra time. New Zealand against Australia. They're always cliffhangers, these trans-Tasman exchanges. More so when there's a Commonwealth Games gold medal at stake. An unbelievable finish to this one. And now we go again. New game for both these teams. I think for Norma Plummer, those changes she made, bringing on Cox, McMahon to goal attack. Certainly cool under pressure. So we're waiting for the resumption of things. We're about to go into extra time to decide gold. New Zealand and Australia. Arch foes on the netball court. And here we go. Seven minutes each way. 
Rebecca Bully injected for Australia. Temapara George back on court for New Zealand. And Anna Scarlett at wing defence. So lots of fresh legs. And Tarn Dalton, that's a good thing. Yeah, I think so too. Bringing on fresh legs. George, we know she can perform under pressure. Shortest player oh. in the circle gets the rebound. She's a freak, Sherelle McMahon. Just outstanding. Australia now ahead by one. 48 mm. to 47. New Zealand's pass, though. And George uses the corner. I feel like she can let that ball go over to Van Dyke. She's got a nice little pocket. So good at the baseline feed. We're even again, 48 each. McMahon. Call for replayed ball. So there's the first turnover of extra time. New Zealand a chance. Let's see what they can do with it. Good squaring. And they stay on the goal attack side of the court. Langman extends. And held oh. ball. There was nothing on for Temapara George, though. This brings me back to Manchester 2002 when it went into extra time. Double extra time. Tense times are right here at Tiagaraj Stadium, but what an enthralling battle we're having. Cox swings it to Kim Green, and McMahon leaves Casey Williams behind. Tutaia, the big pass. George gathers. <laughs> and Moni Gerard all over her. And Van Dyke just needs to post up. She's pretty tight in that goal circle. And Tutaia. She has shot brilliantly all day. Nothing in the shooting figures. New Zealand running at 82%, Australia at 83%. And Cox out wide, giving Captain McMahon room. And McMahon, she could have stayed for three. Cox was there in the oh. end. Hand to it, Grant. Call for distance. They're scavenging everything on New Zealand. And Kath Cox is sinking everything. What a battle royale. Van Dyke out of the circle. And Scarlett used. She's a pretty good target on the transverse line, is Anna Scarlett. And Furman picking up Van Dyke, trying to keep her out. Lovely front cut from Maria Tutaia. And precision finishing again from the 23 year old. We're still even. About halfway through the first period of extra time, 50 apiece. Hands-on pressure from Anna Scarlett. Oh, and stepping. And the Ferns, they need to score from this. It's a bonus ball. Anna Scarlett on the transverse line and the drive from Temapara. The crowd and very good voice. The big Kiwi charts going up. Everybody on the edge of their seats. Oh, lovely vision, beautiful weight on the pass. That's the first turnover of extra time, and it goes the way of New Zealand. Plus the centre pass, George. And same as Van Dyke. Out of the circle, it's how they've been playing it to counter the height of Susan Furman. George cleverly regathers. And Williams being used. The reset by the Ferns. Happy to play it around. 
And we to make the most of any oh. bonus ball to New Zealand. Hand to it, Monia Gerard doing all she can to spoil. Gee, she's fired up. Laura Geitz, surprised she's not biting those pink fingernails. And Van Dijk wants it. And that's what Georgia needs to do. Drop it in the pocket. A minute and a half left. First period of extra time, seven minutes each way. 52 to 50. New Zealand leading Australia. Massive defense of the shot, but she's called for distance, and McMahon won't need the penalty. What an exhilarating match. Oh, oh. Bully, so close there. And oh, lovely. Too tight here. Rolling the circle. Off the fingertips of Rebecca oh. Bully. That's an unbelievable oh. call. And I think even she was shocked. It's the first time that Gary Burgess has umpired a senior international final, so I guess everyone's human. Uh, we don't need calls like that when we're in extra time of a gold medal match. Bully. Straight lines, Australia. And I can see 45 seconds on the clock being held up by the bench. Fingertips to it, but again, the defender's punished. McMahon, the big step in. Safe as houses. Australian yeah. pass. They'll want to score from this. Green does well. And Cox will have a crack. Oh, simply sensational Cox. That's the end of the first stanza of extra time. They switch straight over. Another seven minutes on the way. It's Australia ahead by one. 53 to 52. Get set, folks. This is it. Oh, Van Buto. She's had a superhero performance, has Catherine Cox. Australia up by two now, 54 to 52. New Zealand need this, goes without saying. Langman just twirled all day. And Maria Tutayer has shot like a champion all day. New Zealand need the break. Bully and McMahon. And Cox. Beautiful footwork. No one no saw her. Yet. She was home alone right under the post. And that's what happens when you're under pressure. Lovely lean on the shooting arm from Katrina Grant. She needed to hold it for one more second. Sherelle McMahon. Six minutes to play. 54 to 53. Australia leading New Zealand. Oh, nice use of the front, front space from Van Dyke. And lots of chat. Lots of talk. Lots of pressure. Silver Ferns need the break. They trail Australia by one with five and a half minutes left to play. Extra time for playing for gold here at the Delhi Commonwealth Games. Again. This their chance, New Zealand. Catherine Cox has shot beautifully since she was injected into this game. You've got to look at Casey Williams, the defence of the shot. Just so disciplined. Patient attack from New Zealand, but the call will go against Gerard. I think it's no one, so who knows? And Van Dyke trying to roll the circle, use that top of the circle. This time Gerard is called for contact. And they squeezed in, but get the free shot.
New Zealand pass, the scores are level. Just under four and a half minutes remaining. We're in extra time here at Tiago Raj Stadium in Delhi. It's been a cliffhanger. And for both these sides, they would have been through these scenarios even minutes to go. The pocket, Langman. The Kiwis getting caught up. Tutaia probably lucky to not be called for contact. Clear instruction of where to set the oh. penalty. Stunning stuff from Tutaia. Takes New Zealand out to one. Australian pass. It doesn't get much better than this. Cox is out of the circle. She resets. The Aussies go and go again. They're tireless. They, yeah. Sharao McMahon, just that footwork. And a brilliant lean under all sorts of pressure from Casey Williams. Even again. And Van Dyke again coming out the top. Laura Langman had the fortitude to make a bad pass look good. <laughs> Who'd be a oh. coach? Under three minutes left now, 57 to 56. New Zealand with a turnover oh. have a shot of finishing it. Bonberto and McMahon, the campaigner. Everybody throwing. Everything into this. Scarlet, awesome pressure over the ball. Cox swings it. Swan dive. Oh, Casey Williams. Katrina Grant called, I think, for contact. So McMahon takes a deep breath and eyes it up. She misses, and it'll belong to and Casey Williams. This could be it, folks. And look at the bench, the Silver Ferns. They're on their feet, all right. And it's advanced. Looks like she's had a bit of a blow to the head, but take a bow, Casey Williams. Oh, Rebecca Bully has a stab. She's called, though. It's been an unkind end of the court for all defenders through this final. And the throw-in called for New Zealand. A minute 30 remaining. Oh, massive call. Unbelievable call. Unbelievable. So Australia given a second life. And Grant penalised out. Cox, huge, huge shot, and nothing but net, even again, a minute left. Oh, Gerard comes up with it. And this could be the one that wins it for Australia. New Zealand need it back. We're into the final minute, about 45 seconds left to run. Out of court the call, throw in Australia. No time to waste. Yeah, look for the setup. They're pushing it to the top. And Cox. Oh! Make sure of it. Gerard. Could have just won the Commonwealth Games gold medal for. Oh, and it's team. a break. There's still time for New Zealand. 20 seconds. A tangle of limbs. Aussie will play for time. Expect the bomb. Yes! there from Casey Williams. And Maria Tutai, yeah, this will even things up for New Zealand. It's both Australian defenders beside and away. So Maria Tutai yeah, must need it, and she does. Casey Williams, sensational. Unbelievable. 
The call goes against Irene van Dijk. Just incredible. The result is that Australia now have a shot off an umpiring call. Well, Williams and Grant. Sherelle McMahon, the veteran. Puts her team one ahead with the centre pass. Oh, and Kath Cox, she eyes it up. Oh, the rebound. Williams. And Gomberto will be penalised. Can't say how dramatic, how tense. No. So important for the Silver Ferns. Keep their heads, stay in the moment. Van Dyke posts up. And Tutaia, who's had a brilliant shooting game. And Silver Ferns with the ball. Look at that. Back to even. Silver Ferns pass. They need to get two ahead. If they get two ahead, they will have won Commonwealth Games gold. That's where we're at. 59 each, everyone on their feet. Van Dyke, she's got to get in, she's got to be an option. And she is. This time Susan Furman called. And Tutaia lines it up. The New Zealand bench doing all it can to help. New Zealand need the break. This will win them the gold medal. Oh, Grant, up high. Fingertips to it, but McMahon will regather. Oh, offside and a scarlet, but it was a good attempt. They almost run out of time to Australia. Intense, intense pressure. Big defence of the shot. Catherine Cox really sublime. She delivers. Tina Para George charges through. And Van Dyke out of the circle. It's worked well for New Zealand. It's combated. And George again re-offering for Van Dyke. Trying to calm the troops down. Oh, Rebecca <laughs> Bully all over the shot. And a fantastic lean from Susan Furman. It doesn't trouble Tutaia though. Can New Zealand do it this time? Again, the pressure being applied. George, Tutaia, Langman, everybody. Whoever gets two ahead will win Commonwealth Games goals. And Sherelle McMahon's oh. down. Someone needs to call time. How? What was that? It, it was held ball. Oh, who's balling? Is it? Well, Katrina Grant's not going to surrender it. Oh. Okay, so. Oh, really? Oh, the... Yeah. Ozzy still have position. I didn't hear anyone call time. And we're back underway. Australia need to score to stay in this. New Zealand need the break. Katrina Grant has a go, and Bomberto nearly runs out of court. And the big swing. Both defenders up, but Kath Cox, she's been unstoppable. 61 each. What an arm wrestle. Oh, and a stepping call on George. I'm speechless. Tutaier could have had a stab. Bully now looks behind her to Gerard. Oh, he played ball. ball. And we've got it all. Van Dyke again out of the circle, swings it to Timaparo George in her favourite feeding pocket. And Rebecca Bully just feeling behind her to establish where Tutaier was. Grace Rasmussen. <laughs> Giving it all on the bench, McMahon now. New Zealand need it. Grant gets a hand to it. I think she's just about broken her finger. Oh. 
and she's penalised. So not much breathing space for the defenders in this match. Easy pass to Kath Cox. It's on. Oh. And, right, Silver Ferns, what can they do? If they score off this, they'll win gold. gold. They'll defend their title. Kim Green gets it back. Unbelievable, brilliant Australia. And Cox, she goes to the hoop again. Called for distance. And Casey Williams looks like she's hobbling. Yeah, looks like she's cramping up actually. A bit of calf muscle cramp. It's been a long time out there for these players. Pretty hard to hear the calls over the din of the crowd. It's a fantastic atmosphere in and they Williams. have been treated to a magnificent game. Gracie Williams not looking good. Back to one. New Zealand need the break. And if they get the break and score, they've won goals. Yes. Just about held ball. Scarlett. Pressuring. Aussie bench on their feet. Who can blame them? Cox again. She's been fantastic all day long. No one's going to yield. We're back to even. And Van Dyke's at the head of the circle. Williams has been hobbling for the past couple yeah. of moments. She doesn't want to call time, though, because momentum's really with New Zealand. And again, the fans resetting on the transverse. And the one thing that you can be absolutely assured of is that the Silver Ferns team's fit enough to go the distance. Yeah. Is this the one? Kim Green charges through, and Kath Cox now out of the circle. Hand to it, Katrina Grant. And again, Grant hunting high, throw in Australia. And Cox on the baseline, and she'll go to the post. Brilliant jump, but distance called. Casey Williams suggests the pass could have been taken. <laughs> no such luck, Case. And again, Kath Cox. Just thrilling. Oh, Williams. She's done everything right, has Casey Williams today. New Zealand need this, and then they need a break. Whoever gets two goals up has one goal. So much spoken about Maria Tutaia. Could she stand up? You betcha. She has delivered. Under pressure. Now it's up to the New Zealand defenders. They need a break. Just about held ball. And the yes. goal goes against. And Tutai uh, uh, And now Gary Burgess has called Maria Tutai for offside. So it really is a lottery, folks. Bully. The Australians let off the hole oh, again. Green. Held mm -hmm. ball. And Green slips, does the splits, and... Some tired, tired bodies on this court. This is it for New Zealand. This is the moment for them. Call goes against Kimberly Green. New Zealand will win gold if they score this goal. And Van Dyke moving the circle, posting up. This is probably one of the biggest feeds of the... Just any other goal, that will be the way to look at it. McMahon calls. Kiwi's reset and Van Dyke in the hot spot. He uses Langman, nice narrow channels, and then the pocket to Tima Para George. This is the shot. This is it. Oh, and you it. little beauty! <laughs> <laughs> the Silver Ferns have done it. They have defended their Commonwealth Games title and they have done so after an 
epic encounter against the world champions, Australia. It was tied up at the end of the game. It was tied up after two seven minute periods of extra time. Desolation for the world champions, Australia. Absolute elation for the Silver Ferns and Tanya Dalton, unbelievable. Ah, oh, they have worked their butts off. You know, it's peaked and trough throughout, but at the end of the day, they kept their heads and it says it all. Well, Irene van Dijk began these Commonwealth Games as New Zealand's flag bearer. And she'll leave them with a gold medal around her neck. And in budding Maria Tutaia, the pressure was on, she delivered. Well, a gracious smile from Monia Gerard. She certainly did absolutely everything she could to try and win this game's title. And Tanya Dalton, you're getting a bit emotional <laughs> beside me. Jolene Henry, Maria Tutaia on the ground, rolling around. This is what they've worked for. This is what they've trained so hard for. And it has all paid off. Well, on so many occasions, Australia has robbed New Zealand. Not today, folks. Today belongs to New Zealand at Te Garage Stadium in Delhi. They have won Commonwealth Games gold. They have defended their title. And they've done so by 66 to 64. <laughs> We're getting the big thumbs up from Katrina Grant. Tracy Fear. Tracy Fear wipes away the tears. Yeah, Raylene Castle. So much preparation. All the I's dotted, all the T's crossed. It has all paid off. Take a bow, New Zealand. <laughs> Maria Sutai, <laughs> yeah, one of the absolute stars of the show today. And yes, absolute desolation, Australia. The Kiwis now head across to their gaggle of fans. It's been an amazing atmosphere here at Tiagaraj Stadium. And that says it all, Renee Helen, and you've got to feel for them. They threw everything at this one, did Australia. But, yeah, for Coach Ruth Aitken, the changes she made, the injection of Scarlett, Barrett Chase, George switching around. It has all paid off. And Sherelle McMahon, captain of Australia. She was outstanding today. And one of the best players in the world, all right, but this is a day which belongs to the Silver Ferns. A few ring-ins. <laughs> and yep, that word, gold. Because gold belongs to New Zealand. They were even at full time, these two. It's Raylene Castle, the boss of Netball New Zealand, hugs her Silver Ferns players. They were even again after two periods of extra time. And then Tanya Dalton, it was down to who could reach that two gold cushion. And we toed and froed and we toed and froed and we were on our feet as I'm sure everybody throughout New Zealand was. And New Zealand held on, utterly extraordinary. They did not let up, they kept at it. And, you know, everybody was probably so nervous, including them, but they kept, they kept their heads, that mental toughness. <laughs> and they deserve it. Look at that. Well, tonight's going to be yeah. a good night. A song which is playing. And for the Silver Ferns, you bet it's going to be. <laughs> Sixty-six to sixty-four. An epic battle, one which will always be remembered. And that lady there, Casey Williams, the captain, unbelievable. Well, it was an arm wrestle throughout this one. And as we check out some of the match highlights now, captain fantastic at one end. Doing all that she possibly could. The New Zealand defenders just threw the book at Australia. Casey Williams spent the last few minutes hobbling around the court. Looked like she had a calf muscle cramp, but it didn't matter. 
Oh, I don't think she'll care if she's carried off. <laughs> she was inspirational. And so was Maria Tutaia. Under so much pressure. And they delivered. And they needed everyone, every player to stand up today. And they did. Well, pre-match coach Ruth Aiken said it would come down to the scraps, it would come down to the little things, it would come down to scavenging, and it would come down to who wanted it most. Those invisible threads, we've seen it throughout the week, we've seen it within the Australian Diamond side. And there it was. <laughs> Maria Tutayer from wide out. She'd shot long range all day. And it was just another goal. Turn, shoot, score win gold the end of a fascinating game and the end of a fascinating day <laughs> england beat jamaica 70 to 47 for bronze and now new zealand head away to wait for the medal ceremony and they do so and still yeah. as the commonwealth games champions and they've probably dreamt of walking out of the stadium with the gold medal. They've done it. They've come back. I think well done's a bit of an understatement. And this lady, Sharon Cooney, the physio, you know, big ups to her. She got the players out there fit. Injury free. She would have had a hard couple of weeks, that's for sure. She's probably still got a bit more work to do after this one, but who cares? Well, it's been one of the great afternoons of netball here at Tiagaraj Stadium in Delhi. And it is New Zealand who will stand atop the podium. They've beaten Australia, the world champions, by 66 to 64.